we begin the 25th consecutive season of college football on ABC Sports, we offer you the Oklahoma Sooners and the UCLA Bruins. The game being played in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, located at the eastern end of the San Fernando Valley, which has been a cooker for the last three days. We're expecting over 100 degrees again today, and the Santa Ana winds are starting to blow, which they normally do about noon, and that will rise the temperature to a much higher mark than 95, possibly as much as 105 degrees. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. As these two teams come into the Rose Bowl today to begin their new season, they have a common objective. Sports. Weekends on Five Alive. The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Hi everyone, I'm Roger Twibel and welcome to our 25th consecutive year of college football here on ABC. Today most of you will see UCLA play host to the Sooners of Oklahoma and our other game is Ohio State and Texas Tech in Columbus. A couple of games to report on with about three minutes left. Tony Thompson has rushed for over 240 yards, a couple of touchdowns taking the place of Chuck Webb who's out for the year with an injury. Tennessee all over Mississippi State. And David McWilliams gets his first opening game victory as coach of the Longhorns. Texas beats Penn State the final there, 17 to 13. Semifinals at the National Tennis Center, Andre Agassi over Boris Becker. So that means the first All-American final since 79, as he'll play the winner of Pete Sampras and John McEnroe. I'll be back throughout the day with scores and big plays from around the country. Now, enjoy college football here on ABC. begin the 25th consecutive season of college football on ABC Sports, we offer you the Oklahoma Sooners and the UCLA Bruins. The game being played in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, located at the eastern end of the San Fernando Valley, which has been a cooker for the last three days. We're expecting over 100 degrees again today, and the Santa Ana winds are starting to blow, which they normally do about noon, and that will rise the temperature to a much higher mark than 95, possibly as much as 105 degrees. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. As these two teams come into the Rose Bowl today to begin their new season, they have a common objective, to rise from the ashes, if you will. Oklahoma is still on NCAA probation and sanction. They're back on television all right, but they are still precluded from any postseason play this year. Now, 7-4 and four for Oklahoma last year, not that bad a season for some teams, but you're talking about Oklahoma. You don't talk about it. You don't write home about a 7-4 and four season in Oklahoma. No, you rebuild from there, and that's what they're doing. UCLA, on the other hand, went from the pinnacle of college football in the decade of the 80s to a virtual collapse of 3-7-1. and one. There were seasons since 1971, and when you have a collapse like that, you don't worry so much about who's coming back but you start worrying about some new people to plug the dike, and they hope they have them. Right now, here are the Sooners. Their first trip into the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Gary Gibbs is their coach, succeeding Barry Switzer with the Sooners his second year. He was a linebacker on Barry Switzer's 1974 National Championship team. He was the defensive coordinator before he got the head job. Uh, holding that position since 1981. He has a total of 16 years at Oklahoma. He's red and white all over. Now the UCLA Bruins. It's a Bruin home game, so obviously they are louder for them. They went to eight bowl games in the 80s under Terry Donahue, starting his 15th season. He's had 12 winning seasons, but he is coming off a collapse. And we welcome all of you, along with Bob Greasy, who just entered the Professional Football Hall of Fame this past summer. And, partner, congratulations Thank on you. that. Great honor, really. Here it was. You deserve it. <laughs> Maybe five uh, years ago. Yeah, I know. A long time ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> Let's talk about Oklahoma now. New coach, new offensive ideas. 
Well, Oklahoma is, the wishbone is dead in Oklahoma. They're committed to going to the pass. Uh, not a lot of pass, but they have an option eye. Larry Coker, the offensive coordinator at Oklahoma State last year, has come over to throw the ball more. We may not see a lot of it today because of the fact that UCLA defensively led the Pac-10 against the pass last year and was last against the run. So Oklahoma may run a little bit more than they want to. I think it is a, to. it's a clear fact, though, isn't it, Bob? Inside the top 30 games in the nation, you're going to have to throw some to keep winning. Well, I think that's why Gary Gibbs yeah. is going to it. If you want to win the, win the big games, you've got to be able to throw the football. The Bruins now, they had to make changes, too. New offensive coordinator also for them, Homer Smith, probably the number one offensive mind in the nation last year as an assistant, is back with Terry Donahue at UCLA. He's changed quarterbacks. Jimmy Bonds is a quarterback. Brett Johnson is out of there. Only three starters return, and they've missed, they're have missed. they missing uh, four of the top five receivers on that ball club. So it'll be a tough job for Homer Smith. The thing about UCLA is last year they couldn't run, and they couldn't stop the run. And if you can't stop the run against Oklahoma, you may have big problems. Well, they're not a big team. When you look at them, it reminds me of the gutty little Bruins of the 60s under Tommy Prothrow because Oklahoma does have a size advantage, particularly Oklahoma's offensive front versus UCLA's defensive front. It's definitely an edge for Oklahoma. The teams have met one time previously. That was in Norman, 1986, and the Sooners won going away. make you mad the automobiles test drive a Honda at your local dealership today by UPS for guaranteed overnight delivery from coast to coast UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business by Schlitz malt liquor no one does it like the bull and by Monroe shocks and struts Monroe your safety could depend on it Joining our college football presentation here on ABC Sports as the reporter from the field, Jack Aruth. Jack? Keith, as you said, it's hot down here, and that can sap your strength, make you a little short off the mark, especially as we get down in the third and fourth quarter. Now, the teams, they prepared for it. They've had their two-a-days, but one team that may have a slight advantage may be the Sooners from Oklahoma. The average temperature back in Norman for the last two weeks, approaching 100 degrees. So UCLA may be impacted more than the Sooners. Brian Brown will return the opening kickoff, a senior out of Carson, California, and the man delivering the ball to him will be Brad Riddell, a sophomore from Bedford, Texas, number 84. And we're ready to play on grass in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. My favorite time of the year. Here we go. The two-yard line for Brown. Cuts it up the middle, breaks it clean. One man to beat. Cuts back into traffic, still going. One man, and that one man finally gets in. Darnell Walker. Big, big return. UCLA starts after a 59-yard return. First down on the Oklahoma 40. One of the hazards of playing your first game of the year, you don't know how your special teams are going to perform. Obviously, Oklahoma not covering this kickoff very well. Brown doing a nice job of using the blue shirts that he can. He cuts back, and then the white shirts of Oklahoma are going to catch up to him. But a great field position for UCLA. So Brian Brown, who is not your starter at tailback, if he were, he'd be winded. <laughs> Sean Wills is in there with Caleb Carter, number 48, the fullback, and Jim Bonds, yes, wearing number seven as the quarterback. He wants to throw it to the sideline for Reggie Moore. It's good. First down, UCLA, Oklahoma, 15-yard line. Penalty flag on the field, and the penalty flag thrown right about where the ball was thrown. It looks like it might be a face match. It's 
This is a great throw by Bonds and a very good play by Moore. Number four sees the ball all the way. 29 is uh, Belser does not see the ball, and that's why he can't make the play on it. First play out of the box. Homer Smith comes out throwing the football. There's the face mask right there. Five yard unintentional takes it down just short of the 10, where it'll be first down. And Michael Moore, a six foot three inch red shirt freshman, is in at flanker replacing Reggie Moore for UCLA. Sean Wills is the eye back. He looks to the right side and dives for about two. Sean Wills had one of the brightest moments of his collegiate career here on this field against Nebraska. So he has had some success against the Big 18. Reggie Moore, the man who made the 25-yard reception, uh, the other wide out, Sean LaChapelle. Richardson is hurt. Now you see the red asterisk there. Those are the returning starters. Lance Zeno moved over from guard to anchor the line at center. They're quite young up front and experienced. Reggie Moore is back in. It is second down and eight from the Sooner eight-yard line. Barnes still has the ball. Gets heat, goes down. Back on the 19-yard line, and it was James Good, the defensive right end out of Houston, Texas, that got him, and Good is good. He's a good player. Levins plays the other end. Backs Dillard Evans down in the middle with Scott Evans uh, being the All-American. The backers for Oklahoma, Wilson and Bowden, and the secondary, the UCLA hopes to find some cracks in today, Walker, Belcher, Ray, and Frank. So a big loss on the play by Good, and it's third down. Bonds getting heat again. Pulls it down and takes off. And he is pulled down on the 14 to 12 yard line, and there UCLA will send in the kicking team probably. He got away from Tom Backus. One of the things that uh, UCLA may not respect early on here, for those who have not played an Oklahoma team, everybody out there wearing white can run. They run very well defensively. As you take a look at the uh, field goal kicker coming in to try his first attempt at the college level. It'll be a 30-yard try for Brad D'Aluiso. He is out of San Diego, California. He is a senior. The hold is down. The kick is a low-line drive, but it's good. Tommy Maddox got it down just barely. D'Aluiso got it up just barely. But it is good, and the Bruins go to the lead 3 to nothing. Brad DeLuiso, who has got a very strong leg, will tee it up now and kick it off to Oklahoma. The return people for the Sooners are Otis Taylor, he's number 11, and Duell Brewer, who is number 23. Yes, Otis Taylor is a famous name, but this Otis Taylor's daddy is in the Merchant Marine. He didn't play for the Kansas City Chiefs. DeLuiso hits it. It's a low liner, it's gonna hit the ground. Take a nice high gravy bounce for Taylor. He's got daylight. Take it out of bounds, just past the 40. So both teams get good run back of the opening kickoff. D'Aluiso, the kicker, brought him down. He's a big kid, he's 6'2", 205. The return by Taylor, 37 yards. Special teams, first game of the year, will probably play a big role in this ball game all game long. Remember last year, Keith, we did uh, Notre Dame at Michigan, yep. and the special teams won the game for Notre Dame with Ishmael running two touchdowns back on kickoff return. They haven't seen him yet. From the 42-yard line, it's Rashid and Brewer in the backfield, and here's Collins on a rollout, going to throw it, and it is caught by Rashid, the fullback, up at the 46-yard line. So Gary Gibbs, perhaps, and Larry Coker wanting to plant the idea that we are going to throw some today, and they do it on the very first snap of the ball. Steve Collins over at quarterback. Kenyon Rashid, the big blocking fullback. Duel Brewer, the tailback. Ted Long, a Z-back or a wideout, really, and Arthur Guest. Guest particularly very good. Cooper, the tight end, stands in there 6'6". I mean, he's, he's really a pack. And that's a very big offensive front for Oklahoma and has the potential to be a very good one. On second down, a fumble. Ball running around on the ground. UCLA's got it. Duel Brewer popped it up. Face the 
Largo, number 41, inside linebacker, recovered it. 23, Brewer steps to his left. He just gets the ball, doesn't look it in, doesn't put his hands over it. That was not Collins' fault, the quarterback. He just did not clamp, it, clamp down on it. First game, turnovers, penalties, mistakes, special team play. All of those things are oftentimes involved in the first game of the year, which this is for both teams. So UCLA leading 3 to nothing off a 30-yard field goal, owns the ball on the Oklahoma 43-yard line. Jim Bond gives to the tailback, John Wills. He pops it right up the middle. And he goes inside the 30, got a tremendous trap block. And he's got a first down inside the 27 before Terry Ray and Charlie Frank brought him down. Good blocking by 60, Spalding right there. And the fullback, Carter, trap blocking right up inside. And it's uh, pretty good, a pretty impressive for offensive play by the Bruins so far. First down. Wills again. John Wills from Hanford, California will take it to the 25. Pick up of about two yards. He's rolled back by the linebackers, Wilson and Bowden. Bowden is number 45, a 230-pound junior out of Mesquite, Texas. A lot of Texas folks on the Oklahoma football team. Like the man said, might as well join the Southwest Conference. <laughs> Second down and eight. Wills again, reads the blocking, cuts it back, and will get out of about the 22. In this particular series, they get conservative. We go to Roger Twybill. Penn State and Texas, last play of the game. Tony Saka, with time running out, throws a desperation pass to 89 Al Golden, but Stanley Richard knocks it down, and Joe Paterno's second straight opening game loss, first time, and this is 25th year at Penn State. Keith? Third down. Next time we'll have Ball is at the 22. So they say. Oklahoma's 22. They stay with the crown game. An absolute lack of imagination in that possession, for, I think, for UCLA. I mean, it looks to me like they're just working for a field goal when you run that kind of a play on, on uh, third down and six. Well, the first play from scrimmage was the trap play to uh, Wills up the middle and gained uh, quite a few yards. They tried that same play the next first down to the left. Didn't work, and a, a little bit of conservative call on third and five, but obviously, Homer Smith, who calls the plays, felt like that would work. Aloiso in for his second field goal try. He has one of 30 he recorded. That's a low snap. The kick is better, though. This time he drilled it. And UCLA has 39 and 30-yard field goals with 9.50 to play in the first quarter. They lead by a score of 6 to nothing. On your second one by Aloiso. But... The snaps haven't been terribly impressive by UCLA either time for the field goal try. It's been the dexterity of Maddox that's provided the opportunity for the six points, the holder. There you deep people, Otis Taylor's 11. He's a sophomore out of LaPorte, Texas. Brewer is a sophomore from Lawton, Oklahoma. And Deloiso kicks off. This time he gets a bigger share of the ball and knocks it into the end zone, back to the 20. It'll come first down. The Bruins will open defensively this way, and they're going to have to gamble some today, I think, uh, unless Oklahoma continues to have its problems in handling the ball, where they've just cashed in against the special teams and an Oklahoma turnover. But the Bruins will open with Chalinski, Onwachwebe, and Kelly on a defensive front of three. Ale is the celebrated transfer from Notre Dame. Malone, Argo, and Pfeiffer. Uh, Keaton will be in at an inside uh, backer position as soon as he gets over arthroscopy. And the secondary for UCLA is very good and experienced. And here's Collins, a very quick out. And the pass is incomplete, thrown hard and thrown behind Arthur Guess. Arthur Guess is 5'11", 190, a senior from Oklahoma City. And he has tremendous average numbers per reception. But you got to get it in front of him so he can run with it. What they want to do, they want to get the ball to Artie Guest. He's got great speed. 
First play of the ball game, and take a look at Guess. First play of the game, Oklahoma comes out and throws. Not well. I think it shows what they want to do, but their inability to do it. Also, that first down, three wide receivers. How many times have you ever seen Oklahoma first down? Three wide receivers and no tight end. Here it is again. Mike McKinley is in there now in the backfield, replacing Rashid. Collins on an option. Hitch is there. That looks more like Oklahoma, doesn't it? That one echoed to the foothills, but it results in about a 10-yard pickup as Brewer carries Deion Lambert and Eric Turner collide with him. Take a look at what Oklahoma has done in the uh, decade of the 80s. Nationally, they were ranked second rushing, fourth scoring, and fifth total offense. They've committed to do more passing, and you can still, with three wide receivers, and an I formation still run the option that they've been so popular with and so successful with throughout the years. Very good, right there. There's your option with the quarterback keeping this time. And Collins gets across the 40 and up to the 42. And Eric Turner brings him down, but it's another Oklahoma first down. So the Sooners get the ground game in gear and go for successive first down. Keith, the best part of the wishbone is the option. Taking the ball, have the quarterback running it or tossing it. You, you get rid of the wishbone, you give a threat to the passing game, and you still can get the best part of that wishbone, which is the option. Oklahoma lined up with three men in the backfield and two tight ends that time. A lot of different looks. There you go, two wide and the back. You got the passing threat and also the option threat. Rashid is back in. Collins stand up. Go Quick shot. Good go. guess. Guess is open and down to the UCLA side of the field. Brought down at the 41-yard line. Deion Lambert was the man underneath him. And Oklahoma's arch foe, Nebraska, is out to the lead, as you saw in their game. 8.51 to go in the first quarter. And in, uh, Oklahoma with the ball for the first time today on the UCLA side of the field. First down, the Bruins 41, with the Bruins leading 6 to nothing on a fair field goal. Collins gives to the tailback, and he is hit behind the line of scrimmage by James Malone, but Brewer has the strength at 195 pounds to drive ahead and pick up a couple of yards. In fact, he got about three yards. Take a look at Gary Gibbs. Young man, awfully young, that's graduated from Oklahoma in 77. Oh, he's all red and white, though, isn't he? Collins, low the leg, give the floor, big hole, right side. Good seal blocking on the right side by the Oklahoma offensive front. And it's going to move the ball down inside the 35, close to the 33. They've got to go to the 31. They'll need two yards on third down. Brewer is actually their second string tailback. Their outstanding runner a year ago, Mike Gaddis, had knee surgery last year. In fact, Gaddis was leading the country in rushing when he was injured. He's going to be out again this year, probably most of the year. Mike Lewis, another running back, is also hurt. Double tight end, seal off the right side. Brewer turns the corner and gets the first down. It became a contest of wills. UCLA trying to outnumber them on that side, but couldn't do it. And he gets just enough. As you take a look at Brewer hobbling off there, California Bears beat Wisconsin 28 to 12. This is one area, Keith, that the uh, Sooners cannot have uh, a lot of injuries. As I mentioned, they've already lost two of their running backs, not even here. Brewer, after this, they go to true freshmen. Yeah, but they got this Ernest Williams out of Aurora, Colorado, is in the ball game right now. The true freshman. Now you're talking about 17, 18, and at most a 19-year-old. They probably haven't been to class yet. No. Keeper by the quarterback Collins goes for another Oklahoma first down as he crosses the 20-yard line. It takes you a while to get a handle on the option, and sometimes uh, you never do against a team like Oklahoma. Well, as a look at the quarterback, Steve Collins, started five ball games last year, won four of the five, was injured, has been uh, challenged this year by Kale Gundy, who is a true freshman quarterback, one of the top recruits in the nation last year, but he's a strictly a throwing quarterback. Otis 
Taylor goes in motion into the middle of the line. Goes the big fullback, 240-pound sophomore out of Kansas City, Missouri, Kenyon Rashid. He picked up about three yards, second down and seven. I remember a linebacker one time having played against uh, was Oklahoma, or he's either that or the Air Force. And somebody said, how come you're walking so funny as I've been running sideways all day? <laughs> and I haven't got anything yet. <laughs> Second down and seven, the Sooners making a threat now. The first of the day. Up and down the line, late pick. Pick is taken by Williams and the freshman. The 10 in full stride and busts his way to the eight. First and goal, Oklahoma. comes in at a wide out. Chris Nelson was a quarterback last year. A junior out of Ada. And he's on the field now at a wide position. Collins to the tailback. And I want to tell you, Mr. Williams was just welcomed uh, to big time college football by Roman Pfeiffer. Well, there's Pfeiffer. It's a little mix-up in the backfield. The true freshman needs to study his plays a little bit more because Collins was where he should be, but but uh, Williams was not. And Pfeiffer, who missed all of last year because of a suspension, is back this year. And uh, Bob Field, the coordinator, says he can make some big plays and made one right there. Loss is back to the 11. Quick drop off to the side, and he's knocked down at the five, just inside the five. Number 18, Arthur Guest making the catch. Rob Field, the defensive coordinator. The best pass defense in the conference last year. Six starters returning. It's third down and goal. The ball is just inside the five. They've gone to double tight end now as Joey Mickey comes into the lineup. Taylor goes in motion. Option play to the corner. Quick down. Up the home Collins got it. UCLA in the Pac-10, you don't see the option every week. If this is the big eight, you play the option a lot tougher. But UCLA doesn't play it against the option that often. It's not very well good against it. R.D. Lasher is in. Potter Riddell holds it. Lasher knocks it through. Not pretty, but it counts. So the Lasher brothers continue to dominate the place-kicking chores at Oklahoma as the Hooters take the lead. UCLA campus. The water flows inward instead of upward. I don't really understand it either. But, uh, <laughs> there it is. 10,000 gallons a minute. <laughs> Steve Collins is the man who quarterbacked that possession and stuck it in the end zone for them. And he did it because one of the Bruins was out of place. Brian Brown is the deep man for Riddell's kick. into it, lost it high in the air, and will drop it to Brown at the five. This time the Sooners cover him a little better, and he comes back just over the 22. A lot of times you may ask, why do teams shift or why do they go in motion? Here's a man going in motion. It's the gain of advantage. Watch Gray, number three right here. He's going to come across, and he'll get there a little bit late. The man in motion for UCLA on the left in the blue jersey. He's going to get late. He's going to get blocked. Now look at the corner. Nobody is even there to force Collins to pitch the ball. You try to move, motion, take advantage of the defense by lining up and going in motion. Oklahoma leading 7-6. First down UCLA, their 22-yard line. Kevin Williams is the tailback. Jim Bond's back to throw it. 
lets it go underneath, throws it behind the receiver, and incomplete intended for Kevin Williams. Williams had no chance to catch the ball. It was a bad pass by Bond. Well, one thing you can say about UCLA offensively and Homer Smith, who was the coordinator last year at Alabama and now is here at UCLA on his third time around, he is not just coming out and running on first down and throwing on third. He uh, throw, has thrown on first down twice, and he ran on third and five uh, inside the 30-yard line. You got Rick Daly. Randy Austin has come in. They've uh, got two tight ends of the ball game right now, and one lone back. That is Sean Wills, and Wills has hit pretty good as he gets up to the 25-yard line by Scott Evans, the All-American from Edmond, Oklahoma, a senior. 4.05 to play in the first quarter of the ball game. Oklahoma having come up with a 60-yard march down the field to stick it in the end zone. 80 yards, excuse me. And 13-odd uh, plays with the quarterback Collins scoring. And the kick was good after UCLA had 39 and 30-yard field goals to lead six to We're still in the first quarter. We've had a lot of action as Bonds is chased out of a, in a pass attempt and finally brought down by 85, Tom Beckett. So that defensive front for Oklahoma, and they made a change in nose guard, which they think is going to help them, and I would say right now it appears it's going to. They moved Dick Stacy Dillard, 280-pound junior from Clarksville, Texas, into the nose guard position, and that seemingly has given Evans and uh, the rest of the people along the line more room to bounce around, because Dillard is a bunch of them in the middle. Big. Courtney Kyler is in the punt. Kick is away. It's a good one. Otis Taylor waiting for it. Accepts it and comes back to about the 40-yard line. And the Sooners are going to have good field position as penalty flags go down on the play. The officials today, a, a split crew, Bill Richardson of the Pac-10 is the referee. Frank Gaines of the Big Eight is the umpire. Dale Newhouse, Pac-10 head linesman, line judge, Mac Lucas, out of the Big Eight. I don't know if Bill's Mike's working yet or not. It's a personal foul against UCLA. The rest of them are Butch Clark out of the Big Eight, field judge, Mac Gilchrist, the Pac-10 side judge, and the back judge is Robert Rao of the Pac-10. And so UCLA gets dinged 15 yards for a personal foul, and uh, Oklahoma is now operating first down at the Bruin 44. Just inside three minutes in the first period of play. Brewer is back at tailback. Shook off, getting zinged up. Collins coming down the line, gets away from one Bruin. Pursuit is on. They're going to get him behind the line of scrimmage, and they do. But he ran for a good long time before Randy Cole and Meet Shaw could finally get a hold of him. The Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week brought to you by American Honda, proud to support amateur athletics, Jason Hansen, a junior kicker and punter from Washington State University. He was a star in last week's 21-3 season opening win, averaging 47.7 yards on eight punts, including a 76-yarder. He was an All-American place kicker last year. He is a sophomore, and Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund of Washington State University. Pass to Artie Guest is thrown over his head and out of bounds. It was a deep pattern down the sideline. And being an old Cougar, we thank Honda, right? Right. Washington State opening over TCU. They play Wyoming today and then uh, get BYU the following week. So there are a lot of teams going to be tested early on this year. The strength of Steve Collins is not dropping back and throwing the football. The strength is what you saw him do on the previous drive, and that is running the option. The passes he has completed have been a little bit shaky. If they want to throw the football, they'll bring in the backup, and that is Kale Gundy. Third down and 12 for Oklahoma. Great drop back. That's over the top and incomplete. The pass intended apparently for Brewer, but Brewer wasn't in the same neighborhood. He had run into a Bruin and fallen down. Fourth down. Brad Riddell is in the punt. 
Average last year, close to 42 yards on 37 kicks. Wants a high one, gets a high knuckleball down around the 10, 11 yard line. Lock Chappelle takes it. Ball comes loose after he's hit. You, Oklahoma got it. Tony Levy covers it for the Sooners. Lost Chappelle, the first time he's ever returned punts. Should never have tried to drag this ball back. They were just playing a prevent defense up front. Fumbles the football. UCLA was last in the Pac-10 last year in punt returns. Not starting off 1990 in very good fashion. First and goal, Oklahoma at the Bruin seven. Mistakes, penalties, special teams, first game. This is a way to dig yourself a real deep hole right here. Collins, Brewer, out of bounds, just short. Again, there's no support on that corner. I mean, that, he had six wide open yards. As he, watch, he goes around, there's nobody over there. For sure, that's the way the option is designed. They don't even block two of the outside men on the line. You don't have to block all of them in the option, and that's why Gibbs wants to continue with the option as he goes to some passing in the 90s. Second and goal. The big fullback, Rashid, is not there. They stuff him. Pfeiffer was the first man to hit him. Take a look at Pfeiffer, number 40, right there on the end. Makes the first hit, and then he gets some help from his friends. Rashid is huge, 238 pounds and only six feet tall. Third and goal from the one. Same call. Touchdown, Turner. football Oklahoma's offensive line outweighs the Bruins and when you need a couple of yards this is the safest way to get it Oklahoma had 37 fumbles last year lost 18 of them so they want to take a chance on pitching it on the corner Lasher who didn't miss any points after last year has his two for two this year Oklahoma's lead now is 14 to 6 Saturday, ABC's College Football offers 10 State, Southern California from the Coliseum in Los Angeles. Or you'll see some of you. Number six, Colorado against the Illini at Illinois. And uh, number one ranked uh, Miami will go west. Now, these, these rankings don't mean anything until the games are over today, really. Uh, Miami to go west to meet California. Well, California won today, and at home, the Bears might be a, they might give Miami a, a bit of a scuffle since it's Miami's I think Miami's going to have their hands full out in the uh, Pro Bowl. Yeah, and then they got to... Right. You know, Miami, Miami uh, they lost most of their defense, especially their defensive line, three of the four guys that really set up that defense. Bob and I were down there a couple of weeks ago visiting with the Miami football team and, and saying to them very earnestly that we were pretty sure we saw Lavelle Edwards smile this summer, and that means, that means bad news. That means he's got a pretty good football team lined up ready to play in Provo, and uh, they've already won one game this year and had a week off to prepare for Miami. UCLA's uh, Brian Allen returns the kickoff, a short one, up past the 25 to about the 27. And there the Bruins will have it with 57 seconds to go in the first quarter. You know, Keith, as we come to the end of the first quarter, it's, it's really not surprising that we've had a couple of big special team plays some uh, fumbles that have set up scores. Terry Donahue was concerned about the way his uh, defense was going to play 
they haven't played that poorly, but their they're, they're, uh, field position where they started out has not been that good. Sean Wills, the eye back, part of the fullback, first down Bruins, their own 26. Vaughn gets time to throw, throws it hard, and hits his target up at the 36-yard line, close to a first down. Sean LaChapelle went to a knee to get it. Well, that should make Ch La Chappelle feel a little better. He is the one that fumbled that punt to set up the uh, second Oklahoma score. La Chappelle is playing today because of the injury to Paul Richardson, who was himself starting for Scott Miller. Kind of unusual. You would find a, a wideout who's 6'3", 205, though, returning kicks. Yes, that's true, and it's because Donahue just wants somebody back there that could catch the football. Just short. Clock having been stopped at 50 seconds to go in the first period. This will jog some memories up and down the West Coast. The last time uh, Oklahoma lost an opening game to a Western team was the 1948 Santa Clara Broncos. At the time back in 63, they came out and beat Southern California. I think it was 17-12 in the Coliseum. It was 120 degrees. So there has been hot days before here this time of year. That's a good game by Caleb Carter. He's a 220-pound sophomore from Huntington Beach, and he rims his way close to the 45, and a Bruin first down. It's interesting to note that uh, we're uh, only into the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, we've had two touchdowns and two field goals, but two turnovers have set up two of the four scores. <laughs> the pressure Scott Evans got him third time the Sooners have been able to get the Bruins quarterback number 78 in white is Scott Evans led the team in sacks last year and Spuller trying to block him to the inside Evans was a two-time all Pac-10 player the last couple of years this is his 25th straight start Quarter's over. Oklahoma leads it 14 to 6. After the first quarter, 14 to 6. Second down and 18, UCLA. To start the second quarter out of the shotgun, Bonds gets his pass away. He is hit just as he delivered it. And there's a penalty flag, and you may get a roughing the passer call. Or you might get Wilder holding, and it's Wilder holding. Wilder, number 69, was the man that Scott Evans went around a while ago and got the sack. And this time, Wilder, who's coming off an appendectomy, was trying to keep him out of there, and he did, hadn't got him but the, the fabric and held him. Sabatini beats Graff. Now, I won't tell you, that's new. Graff the other day looked like she was unbeatable, and Sabatini had made a few changes in her tactics to play Graff, and... Lo and behold, she look, won the women's look at this championship. One. I guess he's beaten open. Becker. Yep. That's a sin. And play the final tomorrow. Would that be something of Agassi and Becker? I mean, Agassi and uh, Connors? Uh, I mean, uh, McEnroe. McEnroe. I'll get to it. Third time's the charm. We're just going through the whole up. draw. <laughs> <laughs> they turn down the penalty. We'll take the down instead. Third and 18. Give it off to the fullback on a little bit of uh, delay there. And Oklahoma just sitting in the trenches with the big people waiting, and Kevin Smith didn't go anywhere. And so the Bruins are going to have to punt it away. So the Oklahoma speed along the defensive front is whipping UCLA yes, right now. Yes, it is. And I was just going to say, Keith, that third and 18, not a popular call, especially when you're playing at home. But I think a smart one. You just don't want to turn the ball over again. You're not going to pick up third and 18 too often. Tyler in. Courtney hit a 41-yarder his first try. Gets a little heat this time, but gets it away. It's a tail dragger and takes a Bruin bounce, and it's a good one out of bounds. Down at the 11-yard line. Darnell Walker was the man that came flying in and almost got to that ball. With the roll, it's a 52-yarder. First, qu first quarter shapes up this way. Um, total plays, Oklahoma had 21 to 14. 
total yards 85 for Oklahoma 57 but interesting to note that Oklahoma passing had 24 yards in the first half 24 of their 85 yards were passing time of possession is the same and of course the two turnovers both leading to scores and the Sooners will snap it from the 12. McKinley in the backfield with Brewer behind Steve Collins, who is a 195-pounder from Ennis, Texas. Gives the ball away inside to McKinley. And looks like the linesman wants to mark him up around the 14-yard line. Look at Jim Walden's team. They're winning 28-6. to They've got a kid out of here, uh, Huntington Beach area, and Blaze Bryant, running back, who is really good. I mean, he's really good. Iowa State. Florida under Spurrier. His first game at Gainesville. Second down at about seven. A little quick pop. Yes, almost. It is intercepted. And out of bounds by Roman Pfeiffer. But it was... Uh, Somebody else got a piece of it and knocked it up in the air. And I know I didn't get his number. The Bruins had every chance in the world to score, but as Pfeiffer caught the ball, his own man ran into him and knocked him out of bounds. Let's take a look. Carlton Gray, number three, three-step drop, quick out. The yep. closest man is Carlton Gray. He keeps it alive long enough for Pfeiffer, who we told you earlier, makes a lot of big plays. The third key turnover in this ball game, and the game is hardly uh, a little bit longer than a quarter old. Watch you look at Pfeiffer. Runs very well. Doesn't have a lot of heavy size and uh, toughness up front, but runs well. And his uh, ability to run allowed uh, UCLA to get that interception. In the home of the Sooners, I can hear a whole lot of folks saying, what in the world are you doing throwing the ball from 11 yards? <laughs> You've got to change it. And you, you simply have got to change things because college football has been changing. They play it into the middle as Bonds hands it off to Sean Wills. And I don't know, Wills, I don't think he got anything out of it. The ball was snapped at about the nine, and it's still about the nine. You know, Keith, going back to your point, it's just well made that, uh, you know, his strength, uh, Collins' strength is not throwing the football. But uh, if you're ever going to change and come out of that, uh, uh, system of just running the football. You got to give the quarterback the confidence and the ability to throw. Right. The best down to throw is first down or second and short. Second down, goal from the nine. Bonds back, has time, throws the corner. No. Oh, that should have been six. Randy Austin couldn't jump. That's why. Randy Austin is dragging a very, very sore. Uh, it's Rick Daly. Rick Daly. Well, he's. Uh, that looked to me like that ball could have been caught. Well, he had to throw it over number 15 in the bottom of your screen. That's Frank. And if you're a quarterback, you want to make sure it, you miss it on the outside rather than a little short. Yeah, the didn't. ball would have been underthrown. It could have been intercepted. But Daly getting an opportunity to play because of the injury to not only Austin but also Corbin Anthony. I knew Austin was dragging a sore leg and probably couldn't jump. Daly didn't, and he didn't get the ball. Bonds in trouble, goes down the middle. That's not going to do it. It's caught by La Chapelle, and uh, they're going to wind up with a fourth down. From the two-yard line, what do you do? You're trailing 14 to six. Well, you've kicked two field goals already, Keith, has Donahue. You've gotten uh, an intercept, a, a, a fumble recover earlier in the ball game. You took it down and didn't get a score. If you kick the field goal here after getting another gift of that interception, I think the team and the players need to go for this. Okay. And at least if they don't get it, they leave Oklahoma down deep in their own territory. And here's the pitch, and it's Sean Wills. Touchdown! That will be a huge lift, I expect.
interesting. They ran that play behind two redshirt freshmen, Vaughn Parker and Craig Novitsky. And they opened the gate. kick it off. Galoiso to Otis Taylor, number 11, and Dual Brewer, number 23. 14-14 ball game between Oklahoma and UCLA at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. About 100 degrees, a typical September Oklahoma afternoon. Here's a look at Homer Smith, the off offensive coordinator. No question that he called that play. Organized as these offensive coordinators are, they have two-point plays that you like early in the game, late in the game, and that was definitely something that they had prepared, that if we need a two-pointer, that was the first one that they wanted to go to. Homer's from Nebraska, you know. From Nebraska, <laughs> but he's been around. In Nebraska, <laughs> yeah. Ball fell off the tee. There are your receivers we gave to you. Probably around 60,000. And I mean it's hot. Got a leg on that one. That's beyond the field of play. Let's go back and take a look at the touchdown as a little toss to Wills. You're not seeing Parker and Nowitzki on the right side, but Keith mentioned. Well, let's take a look at the two-point play. The fake is going to go this way and Bonds, but look at Austin right here. Is he going to come and go all the way behind in the end zone? Bonds is going to fake it. Top of your screen coming to the top uh, left. Bonds makes a good effort to avoid one of the rushers. And the pass, two points, and the game is tied. That's actually the same play that they had run and missed the daily, isn't it, for the touchdown? Similar, yeah, yeah similar. Very similar, similar, yeah. Brewer and Rashid in the backfield. This is Brewer. Caught. Got the line of scrimmage, and then his strength, leg strength, will carry the big sophomore up for about a three-yard pickup. On with Twebby, a junior out of Linwood, California. At 255 pounds, the nose guard brought him down. UCLA doesn't have the dominating type of player for that nose guard position. Tuala also plays some, but on with 20, wins the opening uh, starting assignment. Second down and seven. Collins, option, back to Brewer. Brewer gets outside, gets the first down. Up to the 31 yard line. Mike Gaddis uh, may play. He may. Well, Mike's talking about coming back time for the Texas game. But, uh, ooh, look at that. 24 all. Southern Miss and Alabama. Well, Southern Miss has in times past made uh, trouble for the time. Did Southern Miss give uh, Florida State some problems last yep. year to begin the season. Yep. Sure did. First down, Sooner. 31 yard line. Collins gives off to his fullback. A lot of scrunching and banging in the middle, and it's worth three yards for Rashid. But Oklahoma, with that offensive front that they're developing, and put Gaddis back in that backfield, they would be formidable. Thirty-eight-year-old Gary Gibbs doesn't look it. Coaching puts gray on your head pretty quick, but <laughs> Gary really looks young. Second down and eight. Give him two yards on that carry. Collins going to the field side on the option. We'll have a first down. He's finally run down from behind at about the 45-yard line. Matt Darby. First time we've called Darby's name today. The junior out of Virginia Beach at 205 pounds. 
I mean, a guy who will knock your hat off. So somebody's handling him today. Well, he's very key to this defense in trying to stop this option. He is the strong safety, and both he, Darby, and Turner, the free safety, going strong side and weak side, trying to stop the option, will be very important for UCLA. First down Sooners, 45-yard line. 14-14 tie, 10 minutes to go in the first half. goes right down on top of it and keeps it for the Sooners. That's the second time that Brewer has not come up with a handle on a handoff. The other time he lost it, UCLA converted it into a field goal. You saw what he did there, Keith. He's patting his head. That means I couldn't hear you. That was a yep. check off in the line of scrimmage. He probably called in the huddle, check with me at the line. He told the direction and he wasn't sure whether to go, they ride, run the same play right or left side. The Collins, the quarterback, gives direction and he just couldn't hear. He had to wait and see which way Collins turned before he took off. Second down and 12, Collins back to throw. Has all day and goes down the middle and it's deflected by Stacy Argo, the inside linebacker who had dropped back to defend the short zone. George Allen's team, Long Beach State, having a little better go at it today than they did last week down in Clemson. White Sox will not go away. But the A's, speaking about formidable, whew. They just keep getting tougher and tougher, don't they? Third and 12, option, Collins turns the corner. Oh my gosh, he's right on the marker. I mean, that is a tough run by that kid. That's some of the old time Oklahoma philosophy right there. Yes, Third sir. and 12, <laughs> let's run the option. And that is why his strength right there is, is running the ball in that option, not sitting back in the pocket and throwing it. It's a tough transition for Collins. It's tough for Oklahoma. One inch. You go for it. One inch. That's a correct score. Somebody's computer spit out the wrong score. <laughs> Somebody had to put it in. <laughs> Mitch, maybe two inches for the Sooners, and they will go from just short of the 45-yard line on the UCLA side of the field at 9.15 to play in the first half. 14-14 time. This is a tedious moment. May not sound terribly dramatic, but it is, in case you don't make it. But they do. After a moment, as they move the chains, let's join Jackaroo. Keith, behind me right here is the scout team for the UCLA Bruins. All week they have to practice all the Oklahoma plays for this week, and of course the oncoming opponent every Saturday afternoon. They don't dress, they stand on the sidelines. Do you notice they're all wearing shirts? A form of team unity. They say make it happen. That's the new byword for the scrappy little Bruins this year. They and they alone can make it happen, turn things around from last year. Yeah, they were really hooping and hollering in practice here in the week. Sooners <laughs> try the middle. Nothing doing. Rashid stepped in there and took on on with Quebby and Chalinski and they handled it. Well, that's where the defense has to start with the option, Keith, is up front and in the middle. Oklahoma with the big offensive line. If you let them, they'll just run right at you and just push you back. Jim Lawhorn's out there right now. Chalinski, who just left the ball game, and Wayland coming in. Mike is a transfer over from Pittsburgh. Well, he's They play it into the middle again to Rashid, the big fullback. There's your temperature on the field now. It's uh, 
What does that mean? 108? Is that what that is? Gotta be about 10, uh, yeah, 107, 107. huh? Warm enough. Lawhorn, who was in on that last tackle, is uh, not listed on the two deep. Uh, UCLA is down to their third liners and substituting, getting a lot of players in the ball game. Number 26, Dion Lambert had his hands on it, and I think was probably so startled he dropped it. And the Sooners will come up with fourth down, and that was a very poor pass by Collins. It's tough to throw, as you see Bob Field, the coordinator, telling him it's just a safety punt. Coordinator on the uh, sideline, but it's a tough throw into the short side of the field for Collins. Reggie Moore standing back at the 10. Uh, Riddell is in. He'll try to pooch punt it here. Just pump it up in the air and kill it somewhere down around the 10. Gets it very high. That's a good kick. That's a very good kick. Fair catch. Did he call fair catch? No. He did not call fair catch, apparently, and proceeded to fumble the ball, and Oklahoma has Rick Hubbard in. He tried to fair catch it, Keith, and just didn't catch the ball. The ball kept drifting on him, and he just going to drop the football. Here's Moore. Now, Moore is in there because of La Chapelle the last time, as you see. Yeah, he didn't clearly call this fair catch, yeah. Now, all he's got to do is catch it. La Chapelle dropped it before. Moore drops it this time. And Levy got it. Levy got it the last time. That's two recoveries for Tony. My goodness. Well, that's, uh, there's a man who has no experience at drifting around on the high punts, and Oklahoma has got themselves a huge break here. First down at the UCLA 11-yard line, and they take it in the middle with McKinley. Touchdown, Sooner! is going to pop through there in a second. Just good, tough running. Trying to get some of his offensive linemen out of the way, but a tough run and another touchdown after a turnover. Lasher's point is good. And it's 7-19 to go in the first half. Oklahoma moves out to a 21-14 lead. Sale, won't <laughs> 7.19 to go in the first half, 21.14. In case you don't know, on a fair catch signal like that, the covering team must, the kicking team, must give the receiver two yards of freedom. And they've been flagging it this year when they have it. They give him room to catch the ball, and he, he had enough room. He just didn't catch the football. Yeah. Plenty of room. Well, Oklahoma now with 114 yards rushing to 26 for UCLA. And Lasher is going to kick this one off, and R.D. doesn't get all of it. It's very short. Taken up at the 18-yard line by Brian Allen. And Allen uh, runs it back up across the 30 to about the 31. All of the scoring in the ball game has come as the result of turnovers. UCLA jumping out to a 6-0 lead on a pair of field goals of 30 and 39. Then Collins scoring from four yards out when UCLA uh, made a defensive mistake and let him go uh, 80 yards. Then Rashid cashed in a Bruin turnover and uh, made it 14-6. to six. Wills then uh, comes back uh, with a two-yard touchdown run. The Bruins picked up two-point conversion. And now McKinley off of the turnover has just scored from 10 and oklahoma leads at 21 to 14. first down ucla now as jim bond lets it go down the middle and it is picked off at the 49 yard line by charlie franks and the sooners are knocking on the door again time to pass makes to his right throws to his left bond just does not see franks who had rotated up i'm sure that he didn't see the short man he only saw the safety coming over another turnover from you by ucla taking a look at this from behind safety had it covered and uh, franks made a good move to get up to the sideline 
Watts shows the wrong man. Three turnovers now by UCLA. 44-yard line, first down Oklahoma. Brewer, the tailback. Close to the 40. Wearing down toward the end of the first half. And it, I have the feeling that it's been kind of a long first half. You know, fatigue could become a sort of a part of, uh, of things here because it is 107 degrees down on the field. One of the things Donahue talked to his team about uh, yesterday or the day before practice was turnovers and, and special teams and, and what an effect they could have on a ball game. We've seen that here today. Second down and six. knocked it out and uh, Oklahoma still got it. I mean Lambert put a lick on Steve Collins. A great play by Lambert too because he faked like he was going for the toss. Collins didn't toss it and then Lambert said in your face here I am. The ball came out and Collins was lucky enough that the ball bounced right back up to him. Speaking of luck. Colorado's win the other night against Stanford with the tip ball and good oh for a boy. catch and then the fumble downfield that they were able to recover. Whew. I'm sure Bill McCartney knows that he is lucky just to get out of there with a, uh, with a win. Some of you will see Colorado next week as the Buffaloes go east to play the Fighting Illini. 5.50 to go in our first half. We got a timeout to Oklahoma. As you read this, I want to say this. Notre Dame claims they have 52. So that came directly out of the press guide of Oklahoma. So send your cards and letters to Oklahoma. Yeah. Steve Collins carrying the ball down the line is shirt tailed by Roman Pfeiffer. Yeah. Loss on the play. Pfeiffer is making up for lost time. He is uh, one of three or four players UCLA, top of your screen, number 40. 99, Cooper's blocking on him. He just makes a great play. Strong hands. Got it out, stop the Sooners, and Riddell hangs another kick up there, and UCLA going to mess with this one. It takes a UCLA bounce and comes back up to the 14-yard line, and the crowd applause. Well, they have not been able to handle the punt in the ball game. That's what we'll have for you at halftime. Peter Jennings reporting from Helsinki. 21 to 14, our score in the ball game. And UCLA owning the ball now, first down at their own 14-yard line. Brian Brown is the tailback for the Bruins. the 15-yard line. Evans, Dillard, and Bowden. They have a yard, second and nine. Ricky Davis has come in at a wide out now, number 31. He's at a, a running back. He's a tailback by trade, but he's playing wide out right now. Bonds looking for him, can't find him, looks for more, can't find him. And by that time, the Sooners are there. And James Good gets to him first with Franks helping him out. There's a Bruin shaking up back at uh, where the ball was snapped. And that's going to be the tight end, the Rick Daly. Well, you got time out for the moment for an injured Bruin who's going off the field. Uh, UCLA had started their practice this fall with a wealth of talent at tight end. But injuries to Corin Anthony, surgery there, he's going to be out a month. And then uh, Randy Austin with a bad hamstring and now Rick Daly's shaken up. The position has gotten pretty thin. So they're down to their fourth tight end and at wide receiver Miller and um, Richardson are both out of the ball game, so they are really a little bit banged up in the receiving court. Scott Miller, fine player, has a cracked collarbone. He's going to be out close to a month, probably. It's third down and seven. Bonds with a lot of time, throws a hummer, and it's no good. He threw it hard for Moore, but 
I don't, I'm surprised he could even see more because Walker was all over it. And so now the Bruins need a big punt from Courtney Kyler. He's had punts of 41-52, but that 52 was not that good in the air. It was a tail dragger that, that rolled and bounced about 20-odd yards. UCLA both lost both their punter and place kicker from last year, so both of these kickers kicking for the first time. That's a low one. Returnable. Otis Taylor gets about 10 yards out of it before he hit the chalk. 39-yard punt and a 10-yard return. And the premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football is a good one. San Francisco going to New Orleans to play the Saints. That's a Western Division game. Live coverage at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and 6 Pacific here on ABC Sports. It's amazing what San Francisco has done in light of the fact that uh, everybody is getting around 8 and 8, 10 and 6. If you get uh, 11 and 5, uh, you've got a good record. Sooners, with about four minutes to go in the first half, start working with the fullback again, Rashid, working out of the I formation. Touchdown. McKinley was at the fullback position when he scored the last Sooner touchdown with a really hard, tough run for 10 yards. Second down at 8, Oklahoma, UCLA 43. Donahue, Bob Field, and the whole UCLA sideline took a collective gasp because they got caught in a circumstance where Eric Turner, who has turf toe, Michael Williams, young sophomore, number 14, was in there at uh, free safety and had to cover Oklahoma's best receiver. And he did it. Gas has got 4-4 speed. He is super quick. Just an outstanding receiver, and they just want to throw the ball to him maybe 10, 12 times a ball game. Third down and eight. play Dion Lambert the second big play of the ball game for him both, both Lambert down. and Pfeiffer on yep. that defense for UCLA are playing very well two fifty-five and counting in the first half and a 21 14 Oklahoma lead the Sooners going to punt it away this will be the fourth punt for Riddell with La Chapelle now back in there to decide whether or not he wants to mess around with catching the ball. Riddell gets it up there. He calls fair catch, and he makes the catch and falls down at the 15. A 30-yard punt. Uh, Riddell didn't get it up in the air like he wanted it. Like that last one he put up there, knuckleball. He just floated around and floated around, and as soon as he got a touchdown. got a pooch kick and I think most of the time you want to hit that pooch kick off the middle of your foot you don't want to get in a position where you're slicing it just knuckleball it Brown is the tailback he's got it pick up the yard I told you earlier Homer Smith was uh, from Nebraska I was talking to him about where he came from and the difference between Californians and Oklahomans and this is what he said I'm from Nebraska, and I've been admiring Oklahoma football since I was in high school, and they are tough, and they play tough, and they like playing California kids, and our problem is to get tough enough to match that. Uh, we want to do it, think we can do it. We did not do it the last time we played, but our objective is to match their toughness this time and hopefully win with skill and fun. Jim Bond got that pass away in the barest nick of time because Tracy Gordon had him right in the middle of his sights and just flattened it as he delivered the ball, but he got it to Moore and got some yardage out of it. 
Timeouts remaining. At minute and 35 to play in the first half. UCLA with all three. And they're looking right now at third down and five. Double wide bottom of the picture. One. Got a hurry. Dropped the ball, but gets it back, and that's the fourth sack of Jim Bond. He's never looked at that kind of speed coming from a defensive front. Well, there was good coverage downfield also. This Oklahoma unit has been a very tough defensive unit throughout the years. Sooners call this time out. They have one remaining, but they call it because uh, it's fourth down and 10 for UCLA, and they want a chance to handle the ball a little bit before the half is done. They lead 21 to 14. Talking about Oklahoma, here's a look at the defense. Oklahoma's defense in the 80s. National ranking, number one in total defense and pass defense and third in scoring defense. That guy right there who's now the head coach had a whole lot to do with it because he was the linebacker coach. The defensive coordinator, actually, uh, from 81 on. You, know, you hear so much about Oklahoma's offense and the running backs, but uh, the defense, as you take a look at the assistant coaches for the Oklahoma Sooners in the press box. The offense gets the uh, sells the tickets, but the defense wins the uh, championships. Who calls the timeout? All right. Tyler is in the punt, and Brewer is back to return it. They go after him, but can't get there, and it's a line drive kick, and Brewer's got some daylight. But he, it gets dark in a hurry. As uh, big Roman Pfeiffer is down the field. So Pfeiffer with his third big play after a 41 yard punt. Here's Jack. Keith and the battle stay cool down here on the sidelines. The Oklahoma Sooners have an edge over the Bruins. You see, they brought their own fans in. Four of these giants sit on each side of the bench, keeping their players cool. A lot of discipline down here. As they come off the field, they sit down, take the fresh air, then get up and talk to the coaches. It's a good idea. Hey, look at here what we've got. Kale Gundy. In at quarterback with 101 to go. So he's going to run the last series. He is the highly touted freshman from Midwest City, whose brother Mike was a record setting quarterback at Oklahoma State and is now the uh, receivers coach over there. He pitches it back to Williams. And Williams is running around the corner. We'll get up near midfield. So that'll be a pickup of about five yards. Neil Gundy is 6'1, 185 pounds. He threw for over 7,000 yards at Midwest. Now, Midwest City is over there near Stillwater. Oklahoma State. Yeah, and I don't know what they're doing in Midwest City, but I'll tell you one thing. They are playing some awful good football in high school because everywhere I look, there's somebody from Midwest City. Several players in this game. Woo! Keith knocked down at the 45, Roman Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer's having an all uh, an all uh, career day right now. Time out by the Sooners. That's their last one with 42 seconds to go in the first half. And young Cale Gundy in for the last series and a little seasoning. I think this is a good idea, Keith, to get him in before halftime just to get his feet wet a little bit in case you need him in the second half. Because he is the future for uh, Oklahoma football if they're going to throw the football. Collins is, uh, was recruited to Oklahoma as a wishbone quarterback. Gundy is definitely a passer first and an option quarterback second. Well, that Collins is 6'2", 195 pounds. The way he runs with the ball, he could become a receiver or a running back. He could. He's, he's strong. He showed us that on third down and 12 yep. and went for a first down. Yeah. The high school All-American, one of the most highly recruited ever in the state of Oklahoma, and one of the top three or four in the nation, chose uh, Oklahoma, even though his brother is the receivers coach at Oklahoma State. Third down and nine. Let's see if we see a pass. Rashid the fullback. 
He picks up a first down for Oklahoma. That stops your clock at 37 seconds. We may still see a pass. Sooners hurry in. Don't have any timeouts remaining. Go without a huddle. Here it is. His first pass of the Sooner. Down the middle. It is caught. And a penalty flag is thrown by guess who? The old umpire. So it's either too many men on the field, but more likely holding. More likely holding, because that umpire is looking right at right in the trenches where the big fellows work, and it looked to me like he spotted one. We'll watch it on replay tonight, Frank. 27 seconds left to play. Gary is shouting UCLA had 12 people on the field. But it's going to go against the Sooners. So they walk off the penalty against uh, Oklahoma. There's the halftime schedule we have for you. And uh, right now, uh, as they get ready to play here, there's, uh, there's an upset building. Southern Miss in Alabama. Woo. It'll be first down and 25 as uh, Gundy's back throws a touch pass to Artie Guest down at the UCLA 44. It is good. 14 seconds left to play in the first half. Sooners don't have a timeout to work with now. They've spent all three of theirs. See that Gundy's uh, throwing motion is much better than Collins. That time, Artie Guess hardly came off the line of scrimmage. Threw, knew himself was open, went down five yards and threw his hand up. Gundy saw it and got him the football. Well, I like that Maddox at UCLA's got through. He throws the ball so effortless, too. A youngster from Texas. Oh, he may show up one of these days, too. takes you down to five seconds. Pfeiffer, the big uh, defensive uh, game for UCLA, is seven tackles, three for a loss, an interception, and one sack. So Mr. Pfeiffer's in the hunt for MVP, isn't he? And a career day in the first half. <laughs> so. Should be the last play here, unless there's a penalty. The pass intended for Greg, uh, uh, Greg Irvin, defended by Dion Lambert, and uh, that only took four seconds. Smart play, though, by Gundy, the freshman. Scrambled around, found himself some time, and then got the ball in the end zone to give Irvin, number five, an opportunity to catch the ball. There are 22 men on the field, but if my one man can beat your one man, we got six points. Nice play there by Lambert, 26, using his body to screen him off and allow the ball to go over him and out of bounds. UCLA, since the clock was stopped and Oklahoma's going to get another snap, decided to call a timeout to give their defensive troops a little rest. And the UCLA defensive people have been on the field in the second quarter a lot. And when you're not deep, that's bad news on a hot day. There Much as been. you uh, you might think that uh, 107 degrees and, and all of this stuff would uh, would be the the edge for UCLA the home team it's not it's not this hot in Westwood but it is in Norman but it is in Norman unusual that a visiting team would come in and benefit yep. from the weather conditions so here's your last snap unless there's a penalty by the defense. Gundy's got four acres of open land and lets it fly, and it is intercepted. It's intercepted. The ball's hot, guys. Don't stop. Why in the world would he stop running? Michael Williams started to return back up the field, stopped on the 15-yard line and put his knee down, and he had an escort. If you're the end of the ball game in your head, that's fine, but uh, not at halftime. Oklahoma at the half. 
Which is the location of ABC Sports presentation of Oklahoma UCLA with the Sooners leading by seven points as we begin our 25th consecutive season of covering college football. Here are the halftime stats. Take a look at the total plays. Notice that uh, Oklahoma has had uh, 21 more total plays. First downs 11 to 3. UCLA did not make a first down in the second quarter. Turnovers are three apiece. Time of possession in favor of Oklahoma. That's Bob Greasy talking. I'm Keith Jackson. Jack Arood is sweltering on the field and we'll have the temperature for us in a moment. It's running something like 110 to 112 degrees right now. Individually, Oklahoma, the leaders, uh, Collins is 2 of 10 passing for 24 yards and an interception. Rushing, he's rushed nine times for 46 yards. Brewers rushed nine. Guess is the only man that has caught a pass for Oklahoma. He has three. UCLA will kick off to Oklahoma. The Sooners having won the opening cross, preferred to take this one. Number 11 is Otis Taylor. The other deep man is Darrell uh, Duell Brewer. And this is Brad Galoiso kicking off for UCLA. The second half is on. Low line drive that Taylor wants nothing to do with. It goes beyond the marker. And through the end zone for a touchback to the 20 yard line. Leading the UCLA offense in the first half were these people and these numbers. Bonds was 4 of 9 with 45 yards and interception. Not a distinguished half going up against uh, Colorado. I mean, Oklahoma is good defense. Receptions, uh, 2 for La Chapelle. Two field goals. Not much offensively in the first half for UCLA. Six half time, Virginia Clinton. And on first down, the Sooners go to Brewer and he goes for three yards before he is tumbled down. UCLA working out of a defensive uh, front of three in the main, Chalinski, Onwatwebi, and Kelly. I must say, Bob, I think they've played well. I think they've played fairly well. You see that big offensive line for the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, let me give you these numbers. That's Miller, 280, Sawatsky, 270, Wallace, 275, Badis, 295, and Houston, 285, or, or Banning, 270. Those are big people. Steve Collins is the quarterback. Runs the option well, and another big play for Collins as he is brought down at the UCLA 43-yard line. Nobody runs that option play better than the Oklahoma Sooners. Well, you're right, Keith. Watch number 40, Pfeiffer. The middle of your screen, he's going to go up and take the pitch man. Collins acts like he's going to pitch it. Somebody's got to take the pitch man. Now, somebody else has got to be inside to take the uh, quarterback. And Collins just scoots on up inside as Pfeiffer chases him down. Pitch quickly to Duell Brewer. Loses his footing. He wanted to cut it back. And when he planted, stumbled, and down he went. But don't fault this field. That is magnificent turf down there. The field is in outstanding shape. Uh, you know, you talk about the option as you take a look at the field. It is a fast track, real grass, and it's just couldn't be any better. But you talk about the option, Keith. O Oklahoma has run it for years and years and years. UCLA doesn't play that many teams nope. that run it nope. at all, not to mention as well as Oklahoma does. Pop it up the middle for the fullback Rashid on second down and eight and he'll come up about three four yards short and uh, here's an accurate read on the temperature well it hasn't gone up all that much has it but it's been 107 108 now for about two hours and a half three hours yeah boy it'll be a factor in our ball game before we finish So they're putting the big people in there on the defensive front. Give that ball on a pitch to Ernest Williams. And the freshman from Aurora, Colorado will get to the 35-36. But he is short of the first down. Of course, that's what they had in mind as UCLA went to what really was the goal line defense. For a fourth down and a good long two. 
Oklahoma's trying to make up their mind if they want to go for it. Well, I don't think there's like any they question did. they're going for it, Keith. The uh, guess 18 comes in, and uh, uh, Brewer 23 comes in. The already guess comes out to the right side. Brewer is your eye back. And they give it to the fullback, and they get the first down. Big 240-pound Rossi got up ahead of steam on his second step and running right in behind the right side. That tight end, Adrian Cooper, number 99, is 6'6", 260. Well, you're right, Keith. He's just like a big offensive lineman, uh, is Cooper. He's, he's probably 90% offensive lineman and 10% tight end. The rest of the time, he's a falling tree. <laughs> he caught five passes all of last year at tight end, so... First down from the 32. Collins still got it. He took his time, took his time, took his time, and finally, uh, number 20, Williams, got a man, and uh, Collins accelerated off the block and got four yards out of it. He's carried the ball 11 times now and picked up 83 yards. And here's Jack. We found him under a shade tree. Not quite, Keith, but we were back in the locker rooms. And interesting contrast. Coach Terry Donahue and the UCLA Bruins, they tried to drive home the point that it's been miscues and mistakes that have cost them the lead in this game, but not to get down and out about it. In the meantime, over on the Sooner side, they said, let's keep the pressure up and keep applying it. And they're doing it right now on second down and seven. Send uh, the big guy, Rashid, up the middle, and he is down short of the goal line. Six inches short. He just bursts up the middle. What's this? Watch the blocking up front. The right guard is going to pull that 62, Medice. And there's a huge gap right up the middle. The safeties had split. They were playing double zone. And Rashid almost gets in the end zone. And Carlton Gray is hurt for UCLA, the left cornerback. And it's me. Gray started eight games last year as a true freshman at, at corner. So Your time is out for Gray here, and uh, UCLA's already dinged up, as we've told you, with uh, Corbin Anthony, the tight end, out. Uh, Scott Miller, their top receiver, out with a broken collarbone. Uh, who else is hurt? Uh, oh, Randy Austin's got a bad uh, hamstring, though he's played a little bit. Let's see how well uh, Gray walks here. He's walking off yeah. by himself. You mentioned he was a true freshman last year. He started eight ball games. He intercepted two passes and returned one for a touchdown. He barely made it through the year because he had a severe case of homesickness. He's from Cincinnati, from that area. He thought about transferring, but he stuck it out and, and even recovered so well that he attended summer school last year. When the freshman came back this year, he went up and shook all their hands with a big smile and says, hey, if any of you guys get home to need help, come see me. First and goal, about six inches away. Collins, down. Yeah, yep, there's a man with his arms up. Touchdown, Oklahoma. That was a cramp on Gray. Yeah, and that's not, not uh, too uncommon considering the heat. Uh, I'm sure we'll see some other guys with that problem. Kidding. Watch the offensive and defensive line surges. Defense did a pretty good job of penetrating, but nobody over the top. Lesher lashes it through. How many times has that been said? 28-14, Oklahoma. to a 14-point lead, 28-14 over UCLA. And R.D. Lester is gonna kick this one off with Brian Brown going deep for the Bruins. Bruins move up a little bit because he's not as long as Riddell has been. That's a bounce to Brown, and Brown now from the eight. Comes back to the 24. Brian was looking to that side because it appeared for a moment he'd have a chance to break it open but Belser closed the door on him now Terry Donahue needs to get his people cranked up because they're trailing by two touchdowns 
And one more, and you're in for a long afternoon. There's a Bruin shaking up and down on the field. That's Brown. who return the kick. Brian Brown, the injured player. Kevin Williams has had a sprained ankle through much of the fall practice. And he has been in, I guess, for one play today. He was ticketed to be the starting tailback, but he just simply hasn't had any hard work. You look at uh, Brown, number 30, from behind on that last kickoff return. Looked like he uh, has anything wrong with knees or anything. Maybe he just fell on the football. It sounds like a whoosh to yeah, me. A lot of times you just get the wind knocked out of you. You just need about a minute to uh, get yourself off the field. You got 900 pounds falling on you. UCLA has not made a first down since the first quarter. They didn't have one in the second quarter. Kevin Smith is in at fullback now with Sean Wills, the tailback, and Jim Bonds back to throw it. Goes underneath with it. And not much as he goes to Wills, and Wills takes a lick from Darnell Walker. Walker came over from uh, Coffeeville, J.C. He's out of St. Louis, and uh, Coach Foster came over. He was the head coach from Coffeeville, brought him with him. And uh, he really has blossomed, and it's getting hotter. Turn the pool heater down. Put some ice in it. Second down and seven. On the point again. Again throws the short route. Goes to Rick Daly, the tight end. Gets the first down. Up at the 36-yard line. The concession report is 9,000 pounds of ice and counting. Take a look at the possessions for UCLA in the first half. First look at the number of plays. No drive, more than five plays. Got two field goals because of, uh, one of them was a uh, turnover. And then the one touchdown was a six-yard drive. So UCLA offensively has really not done anything. Bond goes underneath again, throws to Caleb Carter as fullback, who had just come into the game. And Carter gets up close to the 40-yard line. That'll be a short pickup. Maybe four yards. But, you know, uh, it looks like right now that if UCLA is patient enough, they might be able to nickel and dime. Well, that's what they're doing. Three plays in the second half, all three passes. That may tell you what uh, Homer Smith told him offensively at halftime. Here going to a shotgun on second down. Second down and six. Trying to set up the screen and get it set up the part of the fullback. And he turns a pretty good play up to midfield. But it, uh, it, it gets a penalty flag. And uh, you've got a Bruin. You've got more. And uh, the safety man, I think it is, Terry Ray of Oklahoma, pointing at each other. So I think that's where the penalty is going to come from. And it just depends. It'll be a clip against the Bruin. So the screen pass works fine. Bonds took punishment. Uh, Carter made a fine run. Ball was at midfield, and they wipe it out on a clip. You know, Keith, we said in the opening, I think you mentioned it, that there is a huge improvement from the first ball game to the second game. And I think this is one of the reasons, because when you come out, play your first ball game, all of these mistakes crop up. In the special teams, you fumble the football, you do things, silly things downfield uh, like that. You correct those things with these young people while they don't play in the second game. Michael Moore, 19, is in. He's a redshirt freshman. Should be ticketed to some starter. He's a very good athlete, but he's not seen the ball yet today. It's second down and 14. Bond's pass is picked off. That's good for six, I think. Well, not quite. Penalty flag down as the interceptor, Darnell Walker, was roaming around. That's a pass that should never have been thrown. I mean, that's like picking a piece of bread off the plate. That's the fourth turnover for UCLA. Two fumbles and... That's a pump and go. Yeah. You pump him and then uh, go Against deep. Accepting team. 15 yards and force from the end of the run. First... Well, Oklahoma's ball, first down. Well, they sort of fixed the mic for Bill Richardson, but not totally. It's a little stop. That ball has got to be there on time if you're going to throw that ball. As quick as the 
as uh, Walker is, you need to have that ball in the air when he's breaking. Well, they were practicing that uh, the other day. You and I were watching them, and uh, he was well, almost that, that, late with that every That was a perfect this. example of a hook and go. That yep. corner bit that quickly. You want to break out and then take up field. There you go. Pump him and go. Yes, sir. That's six the other way. So there's nobody over there. First down for the Sooners at the 35. Williams. Ernest Williams picks up eight yards. Williams the big the Sooner offensive front now starting to open up bigger holes. McKinley coming out, shaking a bit on that play as he made his block, and Rashid goes back at fullback for the Sooners. Defensive signals called by James Malone. He sets him up playing an inside back of position. Go to the fullback, Rasheed. He's got the first down and more inside the 10-yard line for the big fullback. Boy, he's a load, isn't he? 240 pounds. He was a great high school player in Kansas City. Suffered a serious knee injury in high school. Came back and played well his senior year. He was born Kenyon Walker, but his father was, uh, was a devout uh, Muslim. Take a look at this graphic right here. It's been, a, been a, some time since Oklahoma's had a big time running back. First and goal from the nine yard line. Ernest Williams will get a couple of yards to about the seven. Tuwala. On with Twebby. And Chalinski. Make the stop. Talking about those running backs. Uh, what? Kenyon was born Kenyon Walker. His father became a devout Muslim when he was, when Kenyon was three. And he became Kenyon Ali Rashid on a recruiting trip to o uh, Oklahoma. They served him uh, pork, which Muslims don't eat. Then he signed. He came up here, and the first meal he saw bacon, he just kind of laughed. Got it again and goes to the five. Popped out the other side of the stack, but he had been whistled dead. But he was in that melee, and all of a sudden he squirted out the backside. That knee injury that he had in high school has slowed him some, but he still runs around the 4-6. Where's a knee brace? But they've had some great running backs, Keith, at, uh, at, this, at this university. Irvin, number five, is in the lineup now. Third and goal from the five-yard line. The big man, straight ahead. Steve Collins took the step, stepped aside, and on a silk cushion, handed it to the big fella. And he didn't quite get there. <laughs> you look at these offensive uh, linemen come off the field. There are some big people out there. And they're not deep. Oklahoma does not have a lot of no, top offensive linemen this year. They've got, they've got six that they can play. I'm, I'm surprised that they're holding up so well. 20-yard field goal try. R.D. Luster, low line drive. Good. 6.13 to go in the third quarter of the Sooners. Lead by 17. Tommy Maddox, number eight standing there, youngster out of Texas, <clears throat> got his hat on, quarterback, kind of loose, floppy kid, and all of a sudden the ball comes out of all that flopping around like a bullet. You can tell he's coming in the way he's fidgeting. He's got his helmet got his on, he's strapped up, he's uh, <laughs> pulling at his face mask, he's tugging at his jersey and his shoulder pads. Scared to death. Yeah. Ten yard line. Brian Brown with a fine return up across the 30 and out to the 32. Here comes Maddox. Starting quarterback last year was Brett Johnson. He, uh, he had some success. Uh, he was a starting quarterback all of last year. When uh, Homer Smith came in uh, this year, he threw it wide open. And uh, at the end of uh, ball practice, he said that the Jimmy Bonds had won it. Brett Johnson took off. And now we're down to what would be the number three quarterback in Maddox. Red shirt freshman Tommy Maddox, 6'4", 190, Bedford, Texas. 
Going to throw on his first play. Passes away. Passes a bullet. Passes good to the 39-yard line. I tell you, he's a good-looking kid on the center. One of the things that Homer Smith there in the glasses, lower right, said he wants in a quarterback. Is he, first of all, he wants height, which Maddox has, 6'4". Yep. Neither of the other two, Bonds or Johnson, did. And he wants somebody that can throw the ball with some speed. Bonds has that, and so does Maddox. It's just a matter of uh, getting these young kids in there and getting them to develop the system. Second down and two. Pitch goes. Will's got it. Will searches around, dives ahead, does not get the first down. He went two steps too far down the line before he made his cut. You got to remember, if you're a UCLA fan, that this Oklahoma defense is a top defense. It's, uh, it's tough to bring in a break in a new system uh, like Homer Smith is trying to do with UCLA when you're playing someone as quick and as agile as the Oklahoma Sooner defense. Well, they've taken Maddox out now, and uh, well, this is the option quarterback. They brought uh, Bertie Manuel. He's a darter. He's quick as a bullet. He's a dancer. And they don't get the first down, I don't think. It'll be awfully close. They just couldn't open the door on the right side of the line. It'd have been better off, probably, if Emmanuel had kept the ball. Well, because third and one, Bert Emanuel is an option quarterback, one of the best around. And the threat of him running, they were, they were hoping, would spread everybody out. But that, is their, that is their short yardage and goal line offense with Bert Emanuel. UCLA has not converted a third down to this point. They are 0 for 7 in the ball game. They got one here. By a half a ball. Just barely. So now, does Maddox come back? Yeah, yep. Maddox will come back in the yep. ball game. But Emmanuel is just short yardage. Take a look at the rushing comparison. The yards, Oklahoma has 241. Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma has 241. UCLA only 27. That was UCLA's problem last year. They couldn't run the ball and they couldn't stop the run. Well, Wills can't find any room. He's wiggling around in there for a yard, maybe. And that's all. 35. 79 for UCLA. The center is Zeno blocking against Dillard. Dillard is 6'7". And neutralizes Zeno very well. One of the things that you, you want to have if you've got a good defense is a no tackle that can neutralize the center, controlling so the linebackers can run and play defense and make all the tackles. Second down and nine. Brown is in the backfield for UCLA, number 30. Now it's back. Passes away in a hurry. Two Brown. Pass is caught for seven yard picked up to midfield and they're looking at third and two he gets it away in a hurry doesn't well, yeah and just as ucla's defense can't play oklahoma's option very well oklahoma has trouble with passing teams because they don't know how to pass themselves very well and there's not a lot of passing in the big eight conference so the pac-10 has a lot of passing the big eight has doesn't have a lot of that pass. Emmanuel is back in the ball game at quarterback now on third down. Option quarterback. Well, so much for that idea. Joe Bowden just tore it up. The linebacker number 45. The difference in, in, in Emmanuel running the option and Collins for Oklahoma is the defense. Oklahoma defensively sees that option all the time and can defense it, whereas UCLA has problems with it. I think that's got bad idea all over it. No, it doesn't have bad ideas if you're playing well, somebody in the, Oklahoma. in the Pac-10. Yes. Yeah. Not this one. Yeah. Walks away by Kyler. Otis Taylor. And back to the 23. But I, I kind of like what I, your quarterback, oh, Hall of Famer, and I, and what do you think about the Maddox here? He looks pretty good looking. Uh, uh, you can answer when we come back. He's all right. 17-point <laughs> lead, Oklahoma. Well, now, we've got the youngster back in, Cale Gundy, the freshman out of Midwest City. 
And the Sooners leading 31 to 14 have the ball first down at their own 23 yard line. Oklahoma defense has just shut down UCLA since early in the second quarter. That's four or five yards by Ernest Williams, another freshman. And behind him, they've got Aaron Goins, a freshman out of Owasso, Oklahoma. If they can get along without really uh, getting in bad shape, and then get Mike Gaddis back in the middle of the season and get him around into a form by the end of by the Nebraska time. That's liable to be a pretty <laughs> the thing you gotta remember here with Oklahoma, their top two running backs are not in the ball game. That's right. This is William. And they pin him down close at the 30-yard line. Oklahoma seems to have had good running backs forever, starting way back with Billy Vessels. Graduated in 1952, the red dots on the left side, obviously the Heisman Trophy winners. Three Heisman Trophy running backs in Oklahoma. Not a bad crew. They've had kind of a drought, though, lately, Oklahoma has with running backs. Sooners went through the 80s without an All-American running back. It's been eight years since uh, they had an All-Big Eight first pick. Third down and three. Junior linebacker inside for the Bruins out of Dallas, Texas. Put the hit on him. And number 58 took him down. And the Sooners will have to punt. Steve Collins has been hit with a cramp. That's why we were seeing Gundy, I'm told. Uh, John Riddell, the daddy of Brad uh, Riddell, who's doing the punting for Oklahoma. He's the winningest active high school coach in Texas. away at the high, high hanger, and La Chappelle takes it and gets a whole lot of lumps and bumps as a result of it. That town in Texas is Bedford. So we've got eight seconds left to go in the third quarter. Southern California Trojans will be hosting the Penn State Nittany Lions. Lions got beat today by Texas at home, and they will not be a bunch of happy campers next week. You know that. Some of you will see Colorado, who just got by uh, Stanford by the hair of their chinny chin chin the other night and the Miami Golden Hurricane will be in California Miami playing BYU today or tonight out in Provo the defending national champion. first down for UCLA now trying to get something going Maddox out of the shotgun gets the pass away setting up a screen and Bowden is right there the pass was good to Smith, and Bowden was standing right there when the ball arrived, and uh, that one didn't work either. The third quarter is over, back with more. After this message and a word from our ABC station. To the fourth quarter we go. UCLA Bruins, second down and 10. They need to do something quickly. Tommy Maddox, Chase, they flushed him. Defensive pressure looping from the outside. Joe Bowden, 45, and they flushed him right out of there. Freshman quarterback has dancing feet. Well, anytime you get in there as a, as a young quarterback and they got this much heat on you, you got happy feet uh, that's one of the problems and it's not an ideal situation when you come in and you're 17 points behind third and 15. passes away down the middle good for a first down he throws a pretty ball caught by brian adams a freshman from bakersfield california for a first down for ucla up here he's just going to come down and break to the center of the field and as you said he throws a nice ball he's going to have good protection Adams goes about 15 18 yards squares it in throws it over the linebackers head and it's a big first down at the 46 yard line not a good pass. 
had his man out there, that little flare, but he just simply didn't throw it well. I don't know if that ball was deflected or somebody hit his arm, but uh, you're right, it wasn't a good pass. He just didn't get it there. Look at Homer uh, Smith, the offensive coordinator. Homer is a master's, in fact, has two masters, has an undergraduate degree from Princeton, a master's from Stanford, and also a master's from uh, Harvard. Not helping him right here today. Second and ten. Interception on the, the deflection. Joe Bowden tipped it. Jason Felser intercepted, and Oklahoma has the ball on the UCLA side of the field again. First down at the 43. There's a receiver right here. He's going to try and get in the middle of the field. The linebacker here is going to tip it, and this man, the safety, will pick it off. Watch as the receiver tries to get in between the linebackers. The problem here, Maddox is looking all the way. The linebacker comes back when he sees him looking inside, tips the ball up, and the safety, which he should do, is all aware. It keeps everything in front of him, sees it, and makes the easy interception. Steve Collins is back at quarterback. Brewer is back at tailback, and McKinley at fullback. And Collins pitches to Brewer. And the Sooners are turning it on now. First down at the 30. Here's Roger Clevin. Thank you very much, Keith. In Charlottesville, opening drive of the second half, Terry Kirby, the four-yard touchdown run. Virginia leads Clemson 13-7. Meanwhile, at Columbus, Robert Smith has just scored on a two-yard run. Ohio State and Texas Tech tied at 10 late in the third. Let's go back to Keith Jackson. Thank you, Rod. First week of the season. Yep. Some teams that aren't supposed to win, win, and some that aren't supposed to lose, do lose. Yep. <laughs> Running inside, Duo Brewer. Now, when he's out there on the field with the likes of Rashid and McKinley, he may look small, but he's 195 pounds. And he's quick. Well, he filled in last year when uh, Gaddis was injured and uh, gained over 100 yards the last uh, two games of the season. In fact, he was the Big 8 Offensive Player of the Year, was Brewer. Homer Smith says that, uh, that they don't win ball games in the trenches. Uh, Oklahoma's winning one in the trenches today. That defensive front just uh, I, know, I, I think that yeah, I think you're exactly right Keith. and I think that is where UCLA has been down the last couple of years and that is in the offensive and defensive lines that's number 62 Madise is down on the field Larry is a senior out of Gretna Louisiana 295 pounder one of their veterans he's got a cramp you can see the trainer yep. spraying the, uh, the stuff on his leg I'm out. Larry Medis, okay, cramp, rubbed it out, trotted off the field. Terran Manning has replaced him, and Manning is a city. 6 2, 3 25. Number 64. Oklahoma hasn't thrown a pass this half. Williams. Ernest Williams on third and nine is cut down at the 24. And let's see if that gets the field goal unit or the punter in. Matt Darby made that tackle. Manning, incidentally, uh, as uh, Bob said, ate himself out of the job. Otherwise, he'd be starting over there. For, he should weigh about 280, man. He weighs 325. Lasher for a 41-yard field goal. Try a lot of leg. Good. Well, he doesn't mess around, does he? When he gets set, that ball comes flying back and bang. But he keeps it low. He's going to get something slapped down one of these days. The two coaches, Terry Donahue to the left, Gary Gibbs the right. You can tell who's uh, leading, can't you? Terry suffering, hadn't put on his hat. Gary's all organized and looking cool, leading 34 to 14. Not the type of uh, turnaround that Donahue wanted. Mm -hmm. Brian Brown, number 30 deep for the Bruins. R.D. Lasher is going to kick it off for Oklahoma. 
Sooners have been dominant in the second half. They took over the ball game about the middle of the second quarter and they just plain owned it since. Ball kicked deep into the end zone, no return. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Then for the 20th year, through the Chevrolet Scholarship Program, $1,000 will be donated to the General Scholarship Fund of each school. Look at Gibbs uh, right there. You know, his job, his challenge is to wipe out the negative image that people have about the Oklahoma problem while he continues to win. He certainly appears to have done that. First down Bruins at their own 20. Maddox is in at quarterback. Gets his pass away down the middle at the beauty, and it's good for a first down at the 35-yard line to Rick Daly. I think this kid may have just won himself a job, Bob. What do you think? Well, you don't know because the pressure is really off of him. I mean, he's just in there. It's, the game is uh, pretty much over now. He's just loose and uh, playing. I mean, the pressure is on the starter all week, and uh, I don't know if Bonds had a fair shot or not. This Oklahoma defense is pretty tough. Well, they get Stanford next week. Conference game, and the conference game, of course, is very important to them. First down, Maddox goes on to center. Dumps it off. Got it away to Kevin Smith. Instead of taking the sack, picked up about four yards. Tom Backus was the man, uh, number 85, from Oklahoma in pursuit of the quarterback. Gibbs is really trying to turn this program around. Uh, he's instituted a lot of new rules, uh, haircuts. We were out to practice yesterday. Uh, all the kids had haircuts, no earrings, their jackets on the road trips. Uh, baseball caps are a thing of the past. Uh, he's increased the security in the dorms. Uh, as an academic advisor full-time, uh, re recruiting good citizens first and academically safe athletes and uh, not the type that uh, they may have been recruiting in the past. They blow him dead. Didn't get rid of it in time. <laughs> Five-yard penalty on delay of the game tomorrow night. You may not believe your eyes. You'll have seen Bill Murray, Rick Moranis, John Candy, Steve Martin involved in the uh, wildest thing you've ever seen. The network premiere of The Little Shop of Horrors tomorrow night on the ABC Sunday Night Movie. You like to have that crowd turn loose in the town. <laughs> <laughs> Back to second down, 11 after the five-yard penalty. Maddox. Was going to give it away and then kept it and took off for a first down. <laughs> I think somebody was supposed to pass by him and take the ball and nobody did and he took off. Well, the problem was he turned to give it to the man on his right and he was supposed to give it to the man on his left. <laughs> but he did the next best thing. He ran where the runner was going to run. Watch the guy on the right side of the screen. See, he wants the ball. <laughs> and Maddox turned to his right. <laughs> the time I say, hey, listen, listen to me. Take your playbook home with you. <laughs> First down, though, from the 49-yard line. Yeah. There was nobody to throw the ball to. You know, sometimes some of these plays are so slow developing that a team with as quick as defense as Oklahoma has will just eat it up. Mike Coates. Number 41 gets a call on that play oh, yeah. along with Tom Backus. Second and 10. Howard Schnellenberger, Louisville, getting off to a big start. He had a bad ball game last week, though, at a 10-10 tie at San Jose. Yep. Second down and 10. Shoots it, good. First down, Bruins, Oklahoma, 34. Sean LaPelle worked himself open and Maddox drilled him right on the number. La Chappelle just going down in between the zones, finds an open area. And that was good by Maddox also. 
taking some patience in the pocket. Took a little bit longer to complete that one. Seven out of nine, six to six yards, intercepted off a deflection. Another pass that should never have been thrown. And I saw him working on that pass and sideline thing. In the first place, you've got to have a rifle arm to throw it. Second place, the timing is so exquisite. And that's the second time it's been intercepted. Well, the timing had nothing to do with that one. I mean, you can't. In, in, in practice, you, you do this and you just throw it. You've got to look out there and make sure the guy's open before you throw it. He's going over to tackle, and that freshman Beavers just sends him a little message. But they think this fellow, Audrey Beavers, is going to be a great player. They do. They really do. But uh, the quarterback, the point is, just because it's open in practice, you still have to look out there before you throw it yes, in a ball game. Yep. And if he would have looked, he wouldn't have thrown that football. Hale Gundy. And he throws an interception. So the freshman quarterback trade interception. Matt Darby. The Bruins get it right back. Jack Root now with one of the great ones in Oklahoma history, Steve Owen. A 69 Heisman Trophy winner. And Steve, you've got to be enjoying this game. Well, I tell you, it's been great. Uh, you know, we're a young football team. And to come out here and see them play as well as they have today, I know Coach Gibbs and staff, Everybody has to be happy with it. The defense has played outstandingly. Well, before the year began, we talked about how good our defense was going to be. We got some great linebackers and some great down linemen. So I, I think with our speed quickness, uh, we're going to have a great team, a defensive team for the years out. Keith? There's a hammer. Oh, what's he a hammer, huh? d -Lord. First down. Good ball. 43, Oklahoma. outside he doesn't even see Blevins the point being here when you're outside and you have uh, a clear vision you need to look that linebacker off look to the outside fool him a little bit or else you've got to have a quick release to get it by him second down goal from the four Joe Biden walked off he had a cramp too much time no movement on the right movement side on the right side of the line Derek Stevens is the man who moves. Watch this side of the line, the offensive line. The tight end starts. Then the right tackle says, I'll join you. And it cost him five. And it brings it back to the nine. Homer Smith, coordinator UCLA. Even though the game may be out of reach, he can still teach his young troops. Get him some valuable well, play. Well, gone ahead and stuck in the end zone with all this messing around, you know, burned up a half a minute or so. It's not out of reach. There's a penalty flag. He was trying to throw a fade into the corner to LaPel, La Chapelle. And uh, he went the other way, and uh, 
penalty flag went with the play, and it might have been a defensive hold. I don't know. Let's see. Now it's a procedure call against UCLA, so they're backing him up again. Well, that was a 10 yards and penalty. Poor Reed, the receiver ran, ran a slant, and the quarterback threw a fade. And illegal procedure. Against the offense, only six scrimmage. It's kind of hard to complete a pass when you're doing it. <laughs> For sure. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Ooh. Ohio State come back to lead Texas Tech 17 to 10 in the fourth quarter. You know, first games of the year, teams don't really know how bad they are or how good they are. So the weak ones play stronger, and the stronger ones sometimes don't play as well as they should. Pass to the end zone and incomplete. La Chapelle was stumbling, lost his balance. He had beaten the defender. He was available but he didn't have balance. And so he couldn't reach up and catch the ball. And the timing was messed up, too, yep. Keith. He was open for a time, but by the time Maddox threw him the ball, he was pretty well covered again. Fourth down. And the Bruins had it first and goal on the four after Maddox had hooked up with Reggie Moore, and they've been bumbling around ever since. couldn't hold it. Well, this wasn't Maddox's fault. Here's La Chapelle right here. He's going to swing to the outside, but the outside receiver is going to be open too. Either one that he wants, he could have thrown the football to. If I can clear this machine. <laughs> okay. Either man was open. Well, the man in the middle would have been easier, wouldn't he? Because you could have drilled it to him. Yeah. But you know, in practice, this is probably the guy that's always open. Yep. But when you play a game, you've got to be honest. La Chapelle not having that good of a ball game. Come with the punt a little earlier. <laughs> so the Sooners get it back at 7-17 with Gail Gundy in at quarterback. He turns and hands the ball off to uh, Rashid, the big pullback. Ernest Williams is uh, in at tailback right now. I would imagine we're going to start seeing some of that second uh, unit along the offensive front show up. Manning is in there at the guard position. Medice is not going back. Take a look at Donahue. I'm sure he's wondering, uh, you know, we not played well, but offensively, you know, seeing La Chapelle drop that ball, they're on down to third and fourth wide receivers. Uh, uh, Scott Miller is not playing. Paul Richardson uh, was his backup. He's not playing. He's got an ankle problem. La Chappelle is uh, three deep. Williams got his head down and took off to about the 13-yard line. Monday night, ABC Sports, NFL Monday Night Football, defending Super Bowl champion 49ers in the Superdome against the New Orleans Saints in a Western Division contest. Live coverage at 9 Eastern, 8 Central, and 6 Pacific. Kind of hard, isn't it, Bob, to come right out of the blocks to start a season after you play a guy in your own division? It is. It, it, it very much is. And, uh, you know, teams take the preseason different ways. They could come out gangbusters or they could say, all right, now let's just ease into this. And you never know what's going to happen first game of the year, even in the pros when they play preseason games. Well, that's a good hard run by Ernest Williams on third down and five. Three people at least had their hand on him. Couldn't hold him, and Roman Pfeiffer finally hunted him down, but not until he had his first down. It's got to be great to be a running back, a tailback at Oklahoma, because most of the time you get the ball, it's outside the tackles. You don't have yep. to do a lot of that inside stuff, and usually you're getting pitched to by the quarterback, so you just have to beat maybe a corner. Maybe sometimes there's nobody out there. It's got to be great for those tailbacks. A 34-14 ball game with Oklahoma outrushing UCLA 9-1. to The crowd on a 100-degree-plus uh, day, 50,068. Gundy's pass, poorly thrown and uh, incomplete. Didn't get his shoulder square to his target and couldn't put anything on the pass. The offensive coordinator for Oklahoma, Larry Coker, coached Gundy's brother at, at Oklahoma State. And now he has an opportunity to coach Kale Gundy at Oklahoma. Yeah, Mike tore up the record book from the Big Eight. 
That's him on the left there, Larry Coker on the left with the headphones on. That's the tailback, Williams. So they're seasoning that freshman pretty well today too, aren't they? Well, how many times did that happen though, really? I mean, Oklahoma, Brings in a true freshman tailback, and he just they put him in, they plug him in, and he runs for 100 yards. That is, uh, Williams has carried 13 times for 53 yards. Manning is in there at left guard now. Madis is back in at right guard. Williams carrying. And Pfeiffer got a piece of him and brought him down. The Roman Pfeiffer's had a big ball game. Oregon State coming back in the third game. Houston. John Jenkins taken over after Jack Pardee left. And Washington struggled with San Jose. Hmm. Teams don't know how bad they are, and good ones don't know how good they are the first week. You got to settle in. You find out where you are. Louisville, on the other hand, a 10-10 tie on the road last week at San Jose goes for 61 today at home. That's quickly out to Otis Taylor, and Taylor will amble along for an Oklahoma first down up around the 46-yard line. That was almost a no-looker. Just up, bang, boom. The defensive backs, especially the corners of UCLA, are giving these guys, the wide receivers, so much room that the quarterback is just throwing a little hitch out there and then they're running for 10 yards. Four minutes left of the game. Tailback carry him. Williams close to the 50. The way they've run so far in today's game. Collins with 84 yards. Rashid 86, Brewer 57, Williams 58 now, and McKinley 12. Sooners have rambled for their normal on the ground. Trying to turn this program around from last year's 3-7-1, and one. Donahue really shook up the staff. Five new assistant coaches. That's one of those no-lookers where he turned around and let it go, threw it too high for anybody to have a chance at it, including his uh, intended receiver, Arthur Guest. But that's also the kind of a pass play that looks to me like it go the other way real quick. Yep. Yep. In rushing today, Oklahoma now at even 300 yards, and the Bruins have 23. Five new assistants, but that's not to say that Donahue blamed the assistants. He said it didn't, he did not do a good job of coaching. Admits that it's his program, and he's at the core of it. Dundee pitches to Williams, and the Bruins eat it up. Donahue said he just he said he tried everything. He just he just couldn't get the thing turned around. And he admits he was blinded by some of the success that UCLA had had in the past. And he uh, probably said he probably didn't see some of the problems coming. Brad Riddell in one formation. The staff of UCLA in the press box. It's a fragile thing. The melding and welding of a team. You lose continuity when you change coaches. You bring in quality, you get new ideas, but you lose continuity. On fourth down, a high-hanging punt. Fair catch is handled back on the 13-yard line by UCLA. So Brad Riddell... Knocked a good one down via left time to the point of no return, if you will, and LaChapelle handled it cleanly. Two minutes and 30 seconds to play in the ball game. Make it the 14 for the Bruins, and Maddox is still in there at quarterback. They were down, first and goal on the four, and wound up with nothing. A two five-yard penalty called against them. And Maddox is sacked. Number 97 was the first man in, Dr. Lamb. 
And that six times the UCLA quarterback has been sacked today. Six times. Well, six sacks for your Oklahoma and six turnovers. Much from the right side of your screen. Take a look at the pass protection. Now he's stepping up. Now he should have thrown the ball right there. Good coverage downfield. Oklahoma has this one in the bank. One new Duracell back. Quick handoff out of the shotgun to Maury Toy, who hasn't played much today, and he's already the pin. The door shuts after two yards. Marker Land on the tackle. And we go. It'll be third down. of Reggie Moore. Kind of sailed into him and he couldn't pull it down. He was available, but simply couldn't rope it. And it brings up fourth down. Next week, Bob and I will have a chance to see Penn State test the metal of the Southern California Trojans who opened uh, against Syracuse back at the Meadowlands. And Marinovich had a huge night quarterback for the Trojans. I'm not sure that he's... Uh, going to get a lot of Heisman votes right now around uh, <laughs> Troy, but uh, you know, he has, a, he has a two or three weeks like that on national television, and he becomes sure. a viable candidate. I think what Todd Marinovich wants more than anything else is to see a very short kick there by Riddell, is just to be left alone, let him go to school, play quarterback. Yeah. Well, he's been... He's had a lot of attention growing up, and I think he just wants some uh, little breathing room yep. at this point. Yep. Jack Root for a moment. Keith, let's update you again. I'm trying to beat the heat. We just talked to the chief concessionaire here at the Rose Bowl. Believe this, they sold over 10,000 gallons of liquids today. Good Lord. Ain't too hard to understand why. He's... Shoot. Bob got a cramp going to the back of the booth a minute ago. <laughs> Aaron Goins is now in at tailback. And he gets to handle the ball. McPherson. Pat McPherson with the tackle. Number 44, Pat McPherson, a uh, linebacker, puts a hit on him. I said Riddell on the punt a minute ago. Obviously, that's not correct. Oh, should have Tyler. Hit the short punt that took a nine-iron spin on him and came back to him. Inside a minute to go now in this opening game with UCLA trying to rebound off 3-7-1. and one. Oklahoma looking for better fortunes after 7-4. and four. And even though the Sooners cannot go to any postseason activity, they are free to appear again on television. And from what we have seen today, uh, we see some promise in the UCLA circumstance. I mean, you, you don't just run out and, and uh, pounce on a team like an Oklahoma. You better be ready to, with your, your big people, and the Bruins were dinged up some. Yep. But the Sooners look to me like they're a pretty good football team, and are probably going to be a holy terror come November. Well, I think this kid right here is getting a lot of experience in the first ball game. Uh, he's going to be their passer throughout the season. If they get behind any time, they can bring him in. But the rest of the team needs to be able to throw also, uh, Keith. They need to understand the passing game, not just the quarterback. Final seconds ticking away. The Oklahoma Sooners have defeated the UCLA Bruins by a score of 34 to 14. There's your final score, 34-14. Chevrolet most valuable players are for Oklahoma. Kenyon Rashid, 15 carries, 87 yards, a lot of tough yards, and a touchdown. Roman Pfeiffer for UCLA, 13 tackles, three for a loss, a sack, and interception. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund, rewarding students for academic achievements and helping those in financial need. Executive producer of ABC's College Football, Jeffrey Mason. Today's game produced by Bob Goodrich, directed by Larry Cam, technical director Jerry Larkins, associate producer Jim Ressler, associate director Dave Kivia. Oklahoma, 34, UCLA.
ďalej po ty. Coming up next, ABC's College Football Scoreboard Show, featuring highlights and scores from around the nation. ABC's College Football has been brought to you by Geo. Get to know Geo, sold and serviced by Chevrolet Geo dealers. By USF&G Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto and life. USF&G standing behind the USA. And by AT&T, the right choice. This has been a presentation.